Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. This is Posture and Breathing 101. Woo-hoo. Man, aren't you just excited? Isn't that the most, that's the most thrilling thing there is to do with singing? But you got that right. You got everything right. And library needs work. <laughs> okay, before I do that though, let me motivate this just a little bit. Every musical instrument on the planet has three things that are identical, right, in terms of the concept. There is a power source, there's something that vibrates, and there's a resonance cavity or space, right? So, if you're a guitar player, the thing that vibrates is pretty easy, it's the strings, right? The power source is pretty easy, it's your hand doing whatever it's doing, picking or strumming on on the strings, and the resonance uh, space is all of that enclosed air behind the little hole on the guitar, right? Now, if you're a brass player, any of you brass players? Okay, if you're a brass player, what vibrates? Your lips. lips. Right, that's what vibrates. What makes the lip vibrate? What's the power source? Air. Air Air. Air that comes from here, right? (laughs) And the resonance cavity or the resonance space is what? It's all that wonderful tubing, right? Now, the reason that a trombone sounds like a trombone and a trumpet sounds like a trumpet, even though it's the same lip going right, is because the resonance cavity is different for one than it is for the other. Now, the cool thing about voices is the resonance cavity for every one of you is a little bit different. But they all kind of have a few things in uh, in common, right? You all have a throat and you all have a mouth and that's where most of the resonance comes from um, in, in your voice. Okay, so there's fourth thing that only singers have that no other musical instrument has. Guess what that might be? <coughs> Diction. It's articulators, right? It's ways of making words, right? You can articulate if you're a brass instrument, but about all you are articulating is the rhythm, right? You aren't saying words while you're playing, right? So that's what makes singing just a, a step above instrumental in my mind, <laughs> is that it can do everything that an instrumentalist can do, plus it can put words on it to make the song even more meaningful than it can if it's just music. Okay, so now you get on your feet. <coughs> now we're going to talk about posture. Right, why is posture important? Well, I want you to kind of get in touch with the parts of your body here. Right, Your, your um, shoulders are here. Right, Ribs are here. Right, Their, Your gut is here. <coughs> and there's a funny little thing in the middle here that's sort of the floor of the rib area and the ceiling of the uh, abdomen where your gut is, and that's a muscle called the diaphragm. We'll get to that in just a little, in just a minute. But for the most part, what we're trying to do is to optimize what in posture. We're trying to optimize the lungs doing what they need to do because without the power source, right, air, you can't sing very well, right? And we'll prove that. Blow all your air out. Don't breathe, don't breathe when you get to the end. Don't breathe at the end. Yeah, now say, ah. Uh, yeah. So, okay, that was pretty easy. So, the, the reason we want to have the posture is to make sure that the lungs can fill up. Now, the lungs are, start about this high, and they go down to where that divider thing, the diaphragm muscle, is here, right? So, it's, it's all this area kind of where the ribs are, and none of that area down below it. Now, you might think, I think I've got it. Yeah. <clears throat> you might think of this being a lung, right? And you, it may even be sort of the same color, it's probably a little pinker than that one, right? But they, it hangs here, and this is what fills up with air. Now, the bottom part of, the, uh, of your lung is actually attached to the top part of that funny muscle in here called the diaphragm. And the diaphragm, normally in its relaxed state, is like a dome, right? And when you contract it, it, it flattens out this way. But if you, so if you have this attached to that dome-shaped thing and you flatten the dome, right, it's going to pull the lung along with it, which makes more room for the air. So what we're ultimately looking for is that, right? 
maybe yours is a little more like that, <laughs> yeah. right? Because uh, I didn't didn't have a lung shape, uh, <laughs> right? But it's it's an order. It's filling that lung so that you have plenty of air to use for a couple different reasons. One is that you need the air for the power. One is that you need the air to live. Now, if you're if you're breathing to live, you're probably in the wrong sport, right? So as we look at uh, posture again, the easiest way to make sure that the lungs, which are hanging here, have all the room they can have is to get the other things out of the way. And what might some of those other things be? Well, the ribs, right? If, if we all stand like this, right, it kind of takes that, that lung and squishes on the top. It sort of pinches off the top. And I think you can feel it when you let the ribs drop. You can feel kind of how good a breath can you take. Not a very good one, right? So I want to keep the ribs in the high. Not really, really, really high, but as, as high as they can be comfortable. What about the shoulders? Well, the shoulders really aren't in the way, right? So there's no particular reason to have to raise the shoulders. The shoulders just need to stay out of the way and the ribs high, okay? Now, what else down here is in the way when the diaphragm is like this, all right? It's the stuff underneath the diaphragm, right? It's all the stuff down here, stomach and intestines and ugly other things that I don't even want to think about. Um, but when the diaphragm depresses, it's pushing all that stuff out of the way, making more space for the lungs, all right? So what, will, what could prevent that from happening down here? I want you to tighten your lower abdomen, kind of right through here, right? Kind of tighten those muscles, right? And now try to breathe with that tight. It doesn't really work very well, right? So in order for an inhale to work right, we need to have this whole area here pretty relaxed, right? So as long as that's relaxed and the ribs are high, now you've got plenty of space to go. Now, what else might get in the way? Let me see if the balloon will work again. Right, so let's say that's the normal space of your lung, and if I can do this without snapping it, if I were to do this, you see what I just did? Right, what might the corresponding behavior in your body be to do that? Right, see what I did with my butt? Any of you ever kind of throw your butt out behind you? When you're doing that, what you're doing is you're bending the, the bottom part of the lung, and you're both tensing it up and also making less space. So uh, we're gonna make sure this is nice and relaxed and the, this is all fully aligned here. And then all that's necessary is to allow the diaphragm to do what it needs to do to create a partial vacuum for your physicists in your lungs and the air comes in, right? So in that good posture, right? Good high chest here, everything kind of aligned here and out of the way, and we're just gonna blow all the air out, keeping this good and tall, here we go. All the way out, all the way out, all the way out, all the way out, and then when you get all the way to the end, just relax. What happened? Well, yeah. Gosh, you breathe, right? So this is pretty simple stuff, right? Why is it that we spend so much time on breathing <coughs> and singing? Mostly because we get in the way of the right thing happening most of the time. Right, now, um, so we talked about chest and ribs, uh, the pelvis we talked about. Uh, what, in the meantime, what's the head and the neck doing, posture-wise? If this is all nice and tall, what, what should this be doing? Right? For the most part, you should just be loose, right? It, now, if you think about, again, where the air is going to come into your lungs, it's mostly coming in here, right? And then it's going to kind of hit the back of your throat, and it's going to go down your throat, and it finds its way into the lungs through the trachea. Right. So if you can imagine that the the, the, the the tube goes this way and then that way, what might be a way that you could kind of choke down that tube so it's harder to get air? Well, this might be one, and this might be one. Right. So this I call high no high notes disease, and this is low notes disease, right? Uh, basses tend to have this more often because they sing more low notes. Leads and baritones tend to have this one more because they sing high notes more. But we all can kind of have that. So while we're in that good posture, I want you to first get the head nice and level, right? And just take a nice easy breath. That was pretty easy. Now I want you to do this and take the same breath. All right, tell me what happened. <coughs> 
was, the, was there a difference? Yeah, it was harder to get the air in this one, right? Because what you've done is you sort of uh, you clamp down in that space here. We're going to do the same thing now with the, the other way. So we're going to do this and take the breath. Right? Kind of a similar impact, right? It was harder to get air. So, so we're mostly keeping this just nice and relaxed and level with the chest high and this out of the way. All right, so there isn't a lot more posture than that other than tension, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay, so now there are, there's a thing called the breath cycle. I've never taught this before, <coughs> actually. I got this out of a book that I just read this afternoon, but I had read it before as well. The breathing has a cycle of four different things that happen, right? One is inhale. One is suspending for a moment. The third is exhale. And the fourth is recovering for a moment. So we're going to do just a little bit of each one of those on the way by. So inhale is pretty easy. So long as the posture and everything is relaxed, we've talked about a lot of different ways to take a breath. David was talking about through an e-space. I wouldn't go there, but David did. <laughs> uh, the, the point to, to, an, to an inhale is to make sure that the throat is nice and open and relaxed. Right? There are a lot of ways to do that. Some, some people will talk about smelling a rose. So think of what it's like when you smell a rose. You feel what the throat does. It kind of gets nice and open, uh, and so the air goes down and out very easily. Right? Another is kind of the beginning of a yawn. That it's the same feeling of opening the back of the throat and everything relaxing, right? Um, another one that uh, came up just today that I had lost. Oh, um, if you think about the sensation of drinking a glass of water, it's sort of the same thing. The throat opens so the water goes down nice and easy and relaxed. Nobody drinks water with kind of with their throat clamped down. So any one of those will work well on getting just a nice, open, relaxed inhale. Now, we've talked about, uh, and a lot lately, about a silent breath. Why is a silent breath important? It is not because a non-silent breath makes noise, actually. Uh, it's because a silent breath is just an indication that you did the other kind of breath right, right? So if we do, right, that about the only way you can make kind of sound is to clamp down things in here so the throat isn't open and it isn't relaxed. On the other hand, if the throat is open and relaxed, it just doesn't make sound. Occasionally on a really quick one, a little tiny sound, but even then it doesn't need to make much sound. So as we harp and harp and harp about quiet breaths, the reason is that we're trying to make sure the throat is big and open and, and relaxed. And that's kind of what this is about. Okay, so uh, that's pretty easy for inhale, all right? As long as nothing else gets in the way, because the posture is really nice and good, and we should be. Right? Everybody knows how to do that, yes? Let's do it. Pretty simple, right? Any, any trouble with that? Easy, okay, so the inhale size is easy. Now, Part that I haven't taught before is the next step, which uh, which is a very interesting one. It's it's one that the writer called suspend. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a nice big low breath and we'll fill up the tank, and then we're just going to stop. We're not going to inhale. We're not going to exhale. We're not going to tense. We're just going to kind of stay in that spot. Avoid the temptation to clamp down with the throat, <coughs> right? So we don't want to uh, with, the, with the glottis. All we're going to do is take a nice big breath. And, and when you get nice and full, kind of feel as if you're breathing in, but don't breathe any more in, all right? Now I want you to get in touch with what that feels like, okay? There are probably some, safe, some sensations in different parts of your body in the, in the torso area. So we're going to do that one more time. Take a nice big breath, and then kind of feel like you're inhaling, but don't inhale, and get in touch with a number of different spots. Probably there's some sensation in the rib area. There's probably some sensation in the solar plexus area, kind of the upper abdomen area. For some of you, there may even be some lower abdominal sensation as well. Now, notice that I say sensation and not tension. There's a difference between, and the, the description that we use in the singing category, in the judging category, is a uh, distinction between the word tonus and the word tension, right? So if you think about what, uh, what it's like to do that, just to make it look that way, that takes some, some muscle tension to lift your arm that way, right? But that's very different, if I can do this, 
Um, if I had muscles, I could really do it. That's very different than this. Whoa! See? Right there. I mean, admittedly, I don't have much to show off. But you can see the tension. In fact, my arms are quivering because of the tension. So this takes a certain amount of tension for the muscles to do what they need to do. But we want uh, to avoid the temptation to go further than that. Ditto here. So we're going to take that nice breath. We're going to suspend. And you'll feel a little tension along here, but it never gets to this, right? If it gets to this, then you've clamped everything out of, out of existence. This is a tough concept. Anyone having trouble with this so far, right? Maybe you can tell me where you feel a little funny in here when you take that breath and stop. Here we go. Okay, we got here, a little here, even a little in the back sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, right, right, right. But as long as that feels comfortable, it doesn't feel tense and clamped down. That's pretty important in this funny thing we call support. And as we now look at the exhale side. Okay, so if we let's breathe in and suspend, and then we'll go to exhale. Here we go. So good, breathe in, suspend. Okay, now just let it out. Okay, now the thing that's different about singing versus breathing to live is that we sing, we use our breath for much longer periods of time on a single breath, right? If you just breathe in to live, it's usually the inhale takes a lot longer than the exhale. So, so. so you don't spend a lot of time on that exhale, where in singing you, you do. Now you have about the same amount of air, um, the, uh, but we need to use it over a longer period of time. So, if you have the same amount of air, but you need to use it over a longer period of time, how much air per second are you going to use versus breathing to live? Less, right? You actually don't need a lot of air so long as everything else is doing what it needs to be doing. So, we're going to take a nice breath here. We're going to suspend a little bit. I want you to get in touch with what it feels like to suspend. And now I want you to hiss. Good. Good, good. And you can go as long as you want. Now, the, on the exhale side, and this is something we don't spend a lot of time talking about, but it will help you with those long phrases, is once you take the breath, you did a slight suspend, and you, you get in touch with what this feels like here. Now, while you're exhaling, hissing or making sound, you need to maintain that feeling here as long as you can. All right? So, if there's a little bit of tension here, not clamped down, but just tension the kind of, it's because you filled your lungs up. See if you can maintain that while the air comes out. The easiest way I know how to do that is, since when you filled up, this kind of got bigger, try to make the space here stay in that bigger context. So the chest got big, and I go, I could do this, right? And that is, isn't gonna work. it. But one, a big breath, and and just make sure that whole area here that you were feeling before stays fully expanded as long as you can. Eventually, you get to the end, you'll probably have to force it out. But you'd be surprised how long you can go. All right, so that's inhale, suspend, exhale, maintaining the expansion. Now, you get all the way to the end. What happens before inhale? This is something we never talk about, is you just relax. Right? Sometimes we get so wound up in, let's see, inhale, and support, and then inhale, and then support, and then inhale, and then support, that we never relax, so these muscles never get a chance to recover. Right? And when they don't recover, then you start getting even more tense than you would otherwise. So we're going to do the cycle here. We're going to do three counts of inhale. We're going to do three counts of suspend. We're going to do three counts of exhale, maintaining this, the space, and we're going to do three counts of just relaxing, and then we'll start the cycle again. All right, so here we go. Here's uh, the three of inhale. One, two, three. Three counts of suspend. One, two, three. Three counts of hiss. One, two, three. And three counts of recovery. Two, three. And inhale. Two, two, three. Suspend. Two, three, exhale, two, three, recover, two, three. Got the idea? Now, if every song allowed that to, to happen, maybe we'd be done, right? Except usually what we find is that suspend and recover, you usually don't quite get that much time. 
You usually are kind of singing, and you're getting your breath, and you're singing again. So we're going to we're going to clamp down that little cycle that we just did in the exercise. We're going to make the suspend one count and the recover one count. So it'll be inhale for three, suspend for one, exhale for three, recover for one, inhale for three again. All right. So here we go. In two, three, suspend out. Two, three, recover. In two. Three, suspend, out, two, three, recover. In, two, three, suspend, out, two, three, recover. Got the idea? Is it, no, is anybody having trouble so far with the, the concept? Okay, let's do some even longer inhales and some really even longer exhales, but we'll just leave that kind of one count of suspend and recover in the middle. So we're gonna do uh, five inhales, one suspend, uh, eight exhale hisses and one recover. Here we go. So here's five inhales. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five. Suspend. Hiss. All the way to eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Recover. In, two, three, four, five. Suspend. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. All right. Got the idea? All right. This is now. This is all really easy when Jim is up here counting one, two, three, four, five. So, right? so eventually, what you want to do is to get to the point where this gets to be a habit. So that you when you're going to take a breath first for the beginning of a song. Uh, maybe it was the music. Maybe it was the music, right? So you you will automatically get the inhale through the nice open space, which makes the quiet breath, a little bit of a suspend, and then you'll simply start the exhale on the end. The, the biggest trap that I know in the cycle here is probably that suspend step that you, that you might want to be tempted to suspend by clamping the glottis down, right? Everybody know what a, a glottis is? If you do a glottal attack, oh, right? Uh, it's because the, the whole area here uh, around the, the vocal folds clamped down and that kind of got in the way. So we're not talking about this. That suspend step is just kind of balanced as, as you go. Okay, so what about a catch breath? Like you're singing uh, Winter Wonderland and it's going like a bat out of wherever and you got to get one of these because you haven't got time to do. Right? Well, you can do the same kind of breath a little, a little bit quicker, and the way we're going to do it is simply we're going to drop the jaw and let everything else do it, go the way it should. Dropping the jaw helps a little bit in that it forces the throat open a little bit more quickly than it would with the yawn. So I want you to blow all your breath out, and we're going to do a quick jaw drop and quick inhale and hiss. Right? So here's drop. Okay, and one more time, all the way out. Drop. Okay, can you still do that and feel like the back of the throat got open? Right. So if you need one of those quick breaths, that's one that you can always do. And, and if if you if you drop it a little too far, you'll hurt yourself. Right? It's not a tense thing, it's just allowing the jaw to go. And you're and you're there. So that's kind of breathing. Now we haven't talked about phonation at all, because that's the next class. Uh, <laughs> So but I'd like to finish up with what else would get in the way of nice open breaths, nice easy suspension without tension, nice kiss and maintain the space, and a nice relaxed recovery. It's mostly tension, right? So we're gonna do one last thing. I want you to close your eyes and take a good breath and hold it just like a long time this time and kind of do a little inventory from top to bottom on your body and find out where in your body it gets tense. All right, so big breath, hold it. Let's see, is it my toes, is it my ankles, is it my thigh, and my calves, my thighs, my hips, my Adam's apple, my chest, my shoulder, my fingers, my throat, my chin, my nose, my ears, my scalp, um, whatever. Uh, when, you're, can't, when you can't hold your breath any longer, open your eyes, and then I'll know that you're done. Go, Bob. All right. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> All right, so just volunteer a few spots. Where was your primary tension spot? Uh, Steve? Below the knee of Steve. Uh, front or back? Uh, in the back calf area. And calves, yes, yeah, sir. that's one of my big ones too. Somebody else, uh, Eric? Uh, back shoulder. Uh, like right, right behind the shoulder blades, yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of hurt. Yeah, yeah, yes, Brent. Lower back. Lower back down in here. Yep. Okay. Uh, but above the belt. Yep. But below the ribs. Yep. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Jake. It's hip flexors and low ab. I love the way he talks. Hip flexors. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what that means. So, kind of around the hip joint. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, my, my face, actually. Okay. So sometimes we got kind of get kind of clamped down in that area. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, forehead and my throat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now the curious thing is your space is almost guaranteed. Your tension spot is almost guaranteed to be different than the guys next to you. Right next to you. Right. So when he said when somebody says Steve relax, he, what he means is Steve let your let your calves kind of loose. Right. And the easiest <coughs> way to relax a tense muscle is what? Movement. It's movement, yeah. And we, I didn't talk about that in posture, but movement is really important. So we're going to do a, a little bit more of the cycle, and just you focus on your tense spot and make sure that that spot stays a little loose, and then we'll be done, right? So we'll do five in, one suspend, eight out, one recover, and you do nothing more than just do what you did a minute ago, uh, but kind of warm and a little fuzzy movement around that tense spot. Here we go. In, one, two, three. Four, five, suspend. Hip, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, recover. In, two, three, four, five, six, oops, five, suspend. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, recover. One more cycle. In, two, three, four, five, suspend. Out, two, three, four, five, Seven, eight, and recover. Okay? Now, do you think you can do that in sync? We'll find out next week. Thank you, gentlemen. That's what I have.